It's such a, for lack of a better term, too bad that the game had to, the end of regulation came down to that because the Cavs really did have a chance to win it, and that clouds what could have been a fairly competitive game. CC, I'll start with you. What was your reaction to the end of game one? It's not the way you want to see a game like this. You're talking about a championship atmosphere, game number one. These teams facing each other for the fourth time, uh, the second year with, with Kevin Durant and LeBron. I, I, I've been, I've traveled around, I've been very fortunate. I've seen a lot of basketball. My brother played in the NBA with the Lakers and a number of other teams and traveling around with Michael Jordan and Ron Harper and the Bulls. I've been to a lot of NBA finals. Like I've seen a lot of great basketball. I'm talking about pressurized situations. I've never quite seen one in like this. A good friend of mine, Isaiah Thomas, we know about him in the Boston Garden throwing away the ball up under the bucket. We know about Magic Johnson in the Boston Garden. So there have been players that have done things similar to this. But I've never seen anything like this. As simple as the game's tied, your guy's shooting a free throw, you know you're trying to get the rebound. If you, The reason why JR is there is not there for the rebound. It's there if he makes it, they're up by one, he's going to pressure the backcourt. Yeah. That's the reason why he's there. So now the ball is short, and people won't even think about this. Kevin Durant didn't box him out. That's how he got the rebound. I mean, it's just Kevin Durant gets bullied by a guy seven inches shorter than him. You know, so that right there is not the way you expect a game like this. And it seems like all the air and all the hope came out of the Cavs. They didn't play the way they did in overtime, the way they had played the previous four quarters. And the Cavs deserve to win this game. They played well enough to win this game. And what LeBron James did to have one of your teammates, and I love team sports, but also I hate team sports because you got to rely on people to make sure that they know and know the same situation. Uh, it's, 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 it's tragic. It's tragic. It, now, and if they had any hope, you can't give away a game. You can't, the only it's the most lopsided final since the 91 uh, 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 Iverson, right? And you or were right the, there. Oh, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, one. Yes. And it, you can't win a series giving away a game, especially when they have home court advantage and the talent, the difference between the talent between the two. If, if you thought the Cavs were going to have a shot in this series, any 50 50 game had to go their way. If you thought, just like with Houston, when Houston, there was a 50-50 game in game four against Golden State, they won it. 50-50 game in game five against Golden State, they won it. It's like, oh, now you have a chance. Houston's way more talented than Cleveland yes. and had home court. All right, so there, I understand there were other things leading up to this. There was a, an egregious call by a referee or an egregious overturn by a referee. We'll get to it. There was Kevin Love fouling Steph Curry on an and one when you're up two, which you just can't do. There's George Hill simply missing the shot. But to quote Jeff Van Gundy, dumb will get you beat. And as much as I personally like JR, for as a basketball player, he plays dumb. And guess what? This was, this, it was going to be hard for JR to trump what he did at the end of the first half from a basketball IQ perspective. You remember that play? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Jay, th Tries to come in the back door with Steph Curry on a half-court pass. There's less than two seconds to Even go. Even if you steal that ball, it does you no good. All you have to do is stay in front of Steph. He goes for a steal. Steph hits a 32-footer to tie the game at halftime. D this is to not know the score in the waning seconds of an NBA Finals game is a sports crime. Like there's, it is, you can make physical errors. You can make mental errors. Mm -hmm. You can make clutch situation errors. You can make fatigue errors. But to not, I don't consider this a mental error. I consider this an all-time gaffe. A mental error is not realizing, oh, the eight-second clock's winding down. I got to hurry up and get it across half court. To not know. Yeah, I think you can put them all in the same family. Sh sure. When you screw up like this, when you're not knowing, when you're 14 years into the league, You've been a starter for pretty much your whole career. Fourth straight final with LeBron. How can you not know? Like, how can you not call a timeout? He's talking about, oh, I was waiting on my teammates to call a timeout. If you knew there was a timeout, you should have called as soon as you rebounded it. He right. didn't. But for people that don't know, set the stage just a little bit. Give people an idea because it, it did end late last night. Well, what happened at the end I of mean, the game? I mean, the Cavs were down one. LeBron finds George Hill. And this is the other sports tragedy part of it. You said it's tragic. LeBron does something that... In my estimation, LeBron's the only superstar in the history of the league that in this situation would have made that play. Maybe Magic, but Magic wouldn't have been in this situation to have 49 points. 
LeBron is playing as good of a game as he's ever played on as good of a run as he's ever had. They have the ball down one with less than 10 seconds remaining. And LeBron sees a cutting George Hill and says, you know what? I trust my teammates. Fires a pass into him. It would have been a layup. Clay Thompson does the only mm -hmm. thing he can do because Clay's playing on one leg, basically. Played well, by the way. Grabs him. So George Hill goes to the line. In that, that's the thing that's so crazy. For JR to say, I thought we had the lead, and I, he can say what he wants after the game, but he mouthed to LeBron, I thought we were ahead. That would mean he thought the game was tied going into the final possession because he saw George Hill make the free throw. Like, I don't, I, so LeBron trusts George Hill. Says, you know what, I could go for my first career 50-point playoff game. I could go for my third game winner of these playoffs. I'm going to trust George Hill. He finds him, makes the right play. George Hill makes the first, misses the second, and it leads to that. Yeah, and it wasn't after, it wasn't after seeing George Hill play a brilliant game. So to have that type of faith in a player who was subpar, now that's LeBron James. And you have to be able to give him credit. People won't because there's other things that they'll try to talk about. But that was, a, that was a great observation by you because they had four other people in the lane. He would have had to force up a bad shot. He got a better shot for his teammate, didn't convert to a win. How deflating was that, and did that lead to basically the Warriors waking up and uh, saying, oh, hold on, let's just win this right now, and then going off on a, a, a stretch in the uh, No, the Warriors made shots in overtime. Right. It, it's hard as a team, especially when you're on the road. The theory is when you're on the road, do you go for the tie or go for the win? When you're on the road, you go for the win. Because they have the home crowd, you go for the win. So that's what the Cavs were trying to do. And when you go to overtime, when you know it wasn't something that the Warriors did, and it's self-inflicted, it, it. self it's hard for a team to recover. And when you talk about the biggest, um, in the last 20 years, this is the biggest um, discrepancy, discrepancy that we've seen as far as an underdog and you give away game number one on the road, it becomes hard mentally for a team to be able to recover from that. I'm very interested to see how they do this weekend um, as far as, as a team, what comes out of the conversation. Does JR finally admit that he did it? Because that's criminal too, sitting there just lying after the press conference. And saying that, I thought LeBron was going to call timeout, almost putting the blame on the guy who had carried you guys here. And the other thing that happened in overtime is this. We have seen LeBron in year 15. He has learned how to budget his energy to where he has something left for the end of fourth quarters, something he didn't always do. Sometimes he would exert himself earlier in his career in the first three quarters and break down at the end of games. LeBron didn't budget his energy for an overtime. And in overtime, he wasn't able to carry them the way he had in those four quarters. And it was so it was just such a deflating error. All right, so the Warriors escape with a 124-114 overtime win. He's now one of the three best finals performances ever. Jordan's 55 points against the Suns in the midst of the best series Jordan ever played, the 93 finals against the Suns. A 61-point night by one of the most underrated players in NBA history, Elgin Baylor. And then LeBron's 51-8-8. Eight eight. It, of course, it's the first 50-8-8 eight eight in finals history. It's the highest shooting percentage on a 50-point night in finals history. And it gave LeBron his eighth 40-point game of these playoffs, which ties this year. this year. Of these playoffs, his eighth 40-point game of these playoffs in his 19th playoff game this year. It's got to be the best sequence of playoff series by anyone in NBA history. I, it's, it is trending that way, right? So he, it's the most 40-point games in a playoffs ever. It ties Jerry West. And in the finals, LeBron now has more. Now listen to this. He has more 40-point games in the finals since he went back to Cleveland. In four years. In four years. Than Jordan had in his entire career. More 40 point games in the finals in these last four years than all of them, obviously, against this Warriors team, this great team, than Jordan had in the entirety Even of the Even you, you probably couldn't have imagined. You knew LeBron had to, you and I talking privately, LeBron was going to have to play at a level once we started the Pacers series and we could see the back and forth. Mm -hmm. But there's no way you could have imagined eight 40 point games? It's insane. And potentially. Might have a, 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 a couple more. To, to me, I told you, I was with Michael Jordan. I traveled with him. In that Phoenix series, he was unconscious. He, he was really, really unreal. This is the best that I've seen anyone play in the finals, uh, in, I would say, in NBA history. It's such a shame because if he had a legitimate number two, can you imagine how much A, more competitive this would be? 
it would just make his life a little bit easier. A He's doing this two, by himself. A legitimate three, <laughs> a legitimate four. Here, while, uh, here's the thing. While I would have liked, and I think C used the words properly earlier, the Cavs deserve to win this game. I would have liked Cleveland to win this game. They, he, LeBron not having a legitimate number two is why we're getting to see this version of him. The I have to do everything version of him. The guy that seemingly mm. can't get tired. Sure. Like if he was on a better team, we wouldn't see that. And I just want to remind the audience real quick, the last three playoff games LeBron's played. So an elimination game against Boston, an elimination game against Boston, and a game that Six, he played seven. like an elimination game, game one. He's averaging 44, 11, and 9 while averaging 47 minutes played. The fewest minutes he's played in those three games is 46 minutes. Like, this three-game stretch rivals almost any three-game stretch he's put up in his career. Do you think he'd rather have the numbers? He's obviously, that happens when you have to single-handedly win games. Or maybe numbers come down a little, stats come down a little, and make these wins a little bit easier. Oh. LeBron just wants to win. He don't care what he has to do. He don't care if he scored 10 points, 60. You don't think so? Oh, no. Winning? Le LeBron's about winning. You think he wants to lose for the sixth time in the finals? He's got three finals wins. He potentially would have the sixth loss. Absolutely, Jenna. Four more wins. That's what LeBron wants. The stats and everything, they, they're, they're just a side conversation as far as LeBron James and his career. And LeBron's stats, because of longevity, are going to be unimpeachable. The only part of his resume you're going to be able to poke holes in is the lack of titles. So if you're asking in this series, would he rather average 40 well, in a finals this, loss sure. or 20 in a finals win? It would, of course, be the latter, but there's no path to victory. They 